Hi Capricorn, welcome to Higher Source Tarot for your mid-month March 2023 tarot reading. This is a reading for all Capricorn, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. I thank you all for all the support and send you love and appreciation right back and very happy that we can meet again here with the tarot our best friend who always tells us the truth. And if you're new here, welcome. I post new readings on Friday, then again on Monday. So if a reading doesn't fit, just come back in a couple of days. Fridays are always a general reading, so those bring in aspects of money, love, moving, whatever it is that you could ask about. Mondays are different style every week. Today's reading will be a detailed Celtic cross style reading. But then next week, it'll be something entirely different. So you're just going to have to come back to see what that's all about. If you like tarot and you like the channel, I'd love to invite you to subscribe to Higher Source Tarot. What advice do you have for Capricorn? Sun, moon, rising, and Venus. What does Capricorn need to know, please, for the best and highest good? Of all concerned with Capricorn messages for Capricorn, please. We will start off here with the tarot. Then we're going to have the fortune oracle and the whispers of love. Current situation, you've got the chariot. Immediate influence is the five of wands. You're in your subconscious. You have the seven of wands. You have the four of wands in the distant past. Very fiery so far. Nine of Wands in the more recent past. Two of Cups is coming towards you. Interesting, Ace, too. 78 cards here. You're represented as the Ace. You're attracting the Emperor. You have the Hierophant in your hopes and fears. Nine of Pentacles in the outcome. But I definitely feel like in terms of love, you do have a new love relationship coming in. Um, you've also got down here the Five of Cups and the Five of Swords with the Ace of Pentacles. So that's very interesting. Those two as bookends with that Ace. We have quite a few major arcana. We have Taurus, we have Aries, we have Cancer here. Um, we have two aces. We have fire, earth, water, and air, all the elements. So with these two fives, it's all about change. I feel like you're not here to be in conflicts. And if it's been something at work, there may be a new opportunity, a new resource, or even a reconfiguration. I get kind of like a tower moment. Either you end up leaving with that Ace of Pentacles or something gets restructured so there's not nearly as much sort of arguing and conflict. I feel like there's somebody around you at work who does not stay in their own lane. You actually have this five here as well. You keep having these fives all around you. So I do feel like with this, they're saying that you it's it's time for a change. You know, that's what fives are all about. And so with this, it's going to bring in adaptation. It's also activity. It's mind over matter, especially with the five of cups. You know, I always say is, are we done admiring the problem here? Because the solution's right over here. It's time to move forward and that there's no better way to do it than a new chapter with the ace of pentacles. Now, for some of you in terms of, sorry, I keep fiddling with that. It keeps falling open with that ace of pentacles. It is a new resource coming in. So it may be, like I said, a reconfiguration it also could be a promotion for you because you've got money coming in. You've got the luxury card and the outcome. So whatever this ace is, it does open the door to more. If it's a change where you say, no, I've had it with this. I'm not going to keep staying in this situation with the ace of pentacles. It's a long lasting change. And I do feel like the cards, God, they're telling an incredible story today. A new chapter in love or money is offered with that Ace of Pentacles. It feels like luck, but it's really your own alignment. And it's saying these two fives aren't a match for you anymore. And either is this one either. So with the chariot here, this is very interesting because the chariot is all about will, victory, success. It's dominating. And so if there's some kind of chaotic energy around you, it's not going to withstand the chariot. Now, the five of wands can be very childish as well. Um, so I feel like you're done participating in all this chaos. But the five of wands is also, for some of you, it may be about, like I said, a promotion where you get in charge and move some things around that are, it, whether it's people's responsibilities or people in their departments, I still keep getting this reconfiguring kind of energy. Now, the chariot can also be travel too. So with the five of wands, that chaotic energy, I do feel like you'll check and double check and make sure that you have everything 
uh, you know, to go to move forward if there's been a little bit of chaos around a trip. I don't see that staying, especially with the energy of the emperor here, because that emperor energy is all about discipline and that's the situation you're attracting. So with the chariot, it is a time of expansion. It's the chariot says, hey, take that leap of faith because things, everything's going to work out with that one. And so if it is moving on, even if it's buying a car or it's a physical move with the chariot, it does signal that things will work out. And it can be too, for some of you, I keep getting this thing about this restructuring at work. If it's you moving on though, I do feel like you're going to meet somebody who has a uh, almost a mentoring quality about them. They give you great advice, great guidance, great suggestions where work is concerned. So, um, and it's it's protective energy in the in terms of relationships too. You have fabulous protection with the Emperor, the Hierophant, and the Chariot coming in. The Chariot has wonderful boundaries. I mean, can you imagine how many people would it take to pick that thing up and move it? These are boundaries that stay. So especially too, if it's that five of wands represents some kind of chaos in your friendship circle, or even I got what I got first was family. I do feel like with the chariot, you're working things out, but again, you're not going to be a doormat. It's not about saying, well, my, my, you know, interests don't matter here. It's really saying I've got boundaries that don't move. So we're going to have to work this out around those. So I do feel like with this, though, it is ultimately saying everything's going to work out. So the seven of wands is in your subconscious. Whew. Another seven. All right. So we got a lot of fives here, but two sevens now with the chariot and the seven of wands. Again, sevens are all about safety and alignment. This one is about triumph and successful conclusions. So with this, you've got these little nitpicky wands sticking up at him, but ultimately he is the victor. And you have it here a bit too, the sort of this continuing essence about being the victor. But I feel like to some extent, the, the real victory is in not picking up the other end of the rope, not being in the conflict is where you're really going to find success and victory. However, with this, you have a conquering spirit. So you don't give up, even if, especially with love here, even if you haven't had the best turn of events with love, I feel like it's not time to give up on it. You're going to keep moving forward. Eight billion people to choose from. Why not, right? Um, and if you have, or if you're in a current relationship, because you do have a wedding in the past and things got difficult with that nine of wands where you went through a real trial in a relationship, I would see them saying it's worth the investment that we don't just give up because we've had a rough patch. Half the time anyway, relationships are all about our own alignment. Energy, love is energy. Love is never created or destroyed just as energy is not created or destroyed. We get in and out of alignment with it, with the mind. So I do feel like somebody here is saying this is worth the investment and I'm going to keep moving forward with it no matter what. So the Four of Wands is a card of celebration. It's a card of expansion and success. So for some on the career front, this was a foundation ultimately. Fours are the four legs of a table. You have another four in the emperor as well. And I don't know how I didn't catch this. You have the emperor and the hierophant in succession. Four, five, 78 cards. You got it here too. This is pretty cool. So I just feel like they keep trying to show you there's a connection here. But with this four of wands, it says it's success, but it's more work to be done. So it's not the end game. So some of you, if you went through a rough patch in a relationship, they're saying, look, there's real love here. Let's work this out. If it was with a job, though, too, it's still saying there's going to be more to come. It's not the end of anything. It's just the beginning. And so ultimately, this is a time of joy, of happiness, but it's law of attraction energy. So there was flow here with the nine of wands. This nine of wands, nines are about realization. So I do feel like this too, he's the wounded warrior. You've got it a bit here too. See how bulky they are? They're bulked up from having to fight their way through some stuff. So I feel like you've had this, I keep hearing valor. They keep saying valor. Um, but with this nine of wands, I do feel like you've had a trial here. And if it wasn't a job too, where some things just got difficult, lack of employees, something like that, I do feel like it brought some skills to you even if you're saying I'm moving on because they haven't had plenty of time to figure this mess out and they haven't, 
I still feel like it added depth to you and added that staying power and also that energy to be adaptable. So whatever this was, it is in the past. There's the good news. So let's take a look at this. I mean, I, you know, this is pretty crazy. We had four or five. Now, the ace and the two were in reverse, but I that doesn't bother me. I like that two of cups right where it is. Okay, this is your point of attraction here. All right, this is important. So those of you in relationships, you have a relationship that grows and evolves and talk about commitment, have you? My gosh, I don't feel like whatever whoever this is or whatever this is, it's not going anywhere anytime soon, I can tell you that. So with the two of cups here, I like it when they're in order. It makes them really easy to put back. I don't get confused about where they were. So the Two of Cups, for some of you, it is an unexpected meeting. So if you've been dealing with a work situation or a move or some kind of family drama, I feel like right at the time you're least expecting it, here's where the right person pops up, or at least it's a connection. This, to me, it feels fiery, too. I mean, it feels like there's chemistry and real attraction here. I do see somebody there, it like, feels like the first meeting you act, casually brush and it's electrified, you know what I mean? You casually brush fingertips or something and it just feels electric. But with this Two of Cups, it is ultimately a mutual match. So it's two people who come together or a situation that comes together. I feel like too, if you've had conflict, it's also indicating there's a resolution here because this is not two people trying to play tug of war with the cups. They're saying, hey, let's get on even ground here. Let's get this situated. Let's come together. Let's change this direction and let's be in the energy of love. So ultimately it is very much about appreciation. And I feel like there's a bit of a mirroring here. Somebody here may use that too where you say, I tend to mirror people. If we're in conflict or they're escalating, I'm gonna try not to do that. I'm gonna, or else we're gonna mirror each other in love and in the tone of having a, a, whether it's a reconciliation or a peaceful resolution, I feel that more than anything else. So the Ace of Cups represents you. You may be a bit of a voice of reason too in all this. Be pretty darn tough to fight with you and your energy is Ace of Cups. This is certainly not looking to get into conflict. And I feel like any changes in your life, it's this is emblematic of that saying, love these changes, loving this energy, overflowing with love. So if it's a job change, you say, thank God, this is exactly what needed to happen. It feels so much better being here now. And in a relationship too, it's re it really is being head over heels, but it's also on a deeper level. It's on a level of transparency of saying, I can be absolutely myself. I can talk about student loan debt if I need to do that. I can talk about past indiscretions or times I embarrassed myself and I don't care. Whoever this is that you're attracting, very, now they're the emperor, yes, but I do feel like there's unconditional love here. And it is kind of interesting with the emperor because talk about unconditional love, his empress is very different from him. She's, he's structure, authority, discipline, and she's creativity and love and harmony and flowing and glowing and, you know, all of that. But he holds the staff in gold because he's wealthy. There's that. But it represents Venus and it represents his empress. So what he does, he does for her. Now, I will say you, this card has just that little trickle and stream of the gown of the high priestess flowing through, saying that this is about intellect, but it's also saying we're still divine beings. Let's not forget that. So I feel like you have somebody who comes in who definitely wants to make a commitment. And in terms of work life situations, it's, def it's shoring things up. It's getting things much more organized, much more feels like they make a lot more sense if they've been out of order. He is the grand architect of the universe. So it's definitely bringing things into order, but also there's wisdom here. There's protection here. There's authority here. And so with the here event, this brings in unity. The numbers 3, 7, 12 are important here. So for some of you, March, okay, March into the next, feels like the next cycle, the next quarter are going to be a turn of events that are, are beautiful. They're blissful is what it feels like. In terms of relationships, though, this is high integrity. It's somebody who means what they say. They say what they mean. There's no nothing hidden. There's no hidden agenda here. And in terms of work, though, too, it is making gains. So for some of you, you may be training other people. Now, she is the single lady card, but in this reading, I definitely get this as more of related to work and money. 
But I also will say you do have companionship here. The Nine of Pentacles, she stands in a small paradise. So it's feeling like being in paradise. It's feeling like it checks all the boxes. This is a wonderful card to be in because the energy here is light and it's confident, but it's a feeling connected with other people too. So I feel like it'll just be all aglow there, Capricorn. So let's see here what the Fortune Oracle has to say for you to attract financial abundance and prosperity. What does Capricorn need to know, please, about financial abundance and prosperity? You've got unity, okay? You've got unity there, too, in the Hierophant. A time of divine understanding, renewal, peace, and hope. You radiate and attract great love. So even in career life and money, that's so important because we know the frequency of love is high vibrational. It's fast. And the frequency of money is high vibrational. It's also fast. What else does Capricorn need to know about love, please? Advice for Capricorn to attract love into their lives. All right, you have here spiritual connection. A relationship has a connection that goes beyond this lifetime. So if you haven't attracted them yet, you definitely have a soulmate coming in. There is real love here and financial gains too. I love you too, Capricorn, and I'll be back again soon.